Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. Today, I got the Glen Going Teapot Dram. It's batch six, non-chill filtered, natural color, cast strength, 59.2% ABV, first fill, Old Rosso Sherry Casks. This bottle traveled a serious distance to get to me. I will let you know how I acquired it when I nose it, taste it, and give it a mark. Only 2,772 bottles in this batch were produced. Let's see how it is on the nose. So right away, big, rich, bold sherry. Um, almost like a musty kind of sherry note to it as well. You get jam, you get plums, big like rich plum note. Definitely some spice, some chocolate in there on the back end maybe, kind of in the background. Maybe a little bit of like baked goods as well. But what you would expect with first fill, castrang, Oloroso, yeah, it delivers. It's a big, rich, bold nose. Let's go palette. And boom, delivers on the palette as well. Big hit, sherry. You get really sweet strawberry and raspberry jam. You get lots and lots of spice on it too very spicy, and then brown sugar. Huge hit of brown sugar, very, very rich, um, very viscous on the mouthfeel too. And finish, I'm gonna say medium to long in length. All those jam notes, um, the spice, all that continues on into the finish. Um, kind of like a little bit youthful bite to it, I'd say. Um, not an age statement, we don't know how old it is, um, but you definitely do pick up just a little bit of that like youthful sharpness on the finish, but it stays very, very juicy um, throughout the whole thing. Doesn't dry at all, um, really kind of like that about it. It reminds me almost of Abulur Abuna and the fact that you get that youthful, big, bold sherry notes and it remains, um, you know, juicy throughout. There's no, there's no drying. There's, there's like hardly any oak influence. If I get any, I don't think I really do get much oak at all out of this. I don't even think I do get any oak. Um, you know, that speaks to kind of maybe like the maturation. It's not, it's not in the wood for too long. Estimated age on this, I would say anywhere between seven to maybe nine years old, perhaps. Um, but it delivers. It delivers like you want a big, bold sherry bomb to deliver. Um, Score-wise for me, I'm gonna give this 88 out of 100 for value. Um, this ended up costing me approximately 190 Canadian dollars after everything was said and done. So that's pretty expensive for what you're getting compared to the Abuna, which costs about 100 bucks Canadian. Um, I'm gonna take off one mark for value bring it down to 87 out of 100. Let's get into how I acquired this bottle. I'm gonna add a bit of water. Uh, in my notes, I wrote down that water brings out a little more spiciness, a little more clove notes perhaps, and some, uh, some sugar cookies. I'm gonna see with a touch of water here if that still holds up and let you know how I got this bottle. So if you've done any research into teapot drams, they are like a distillery exclusive at Glen Goyne. They do sell them on the Glen Goyne website. However, Glen Goyne will only ship these to pretty much like the UK, maybe a couple countries in Europe, but not very far, definitely not overseas. So how did I get this bottle? Well, I went through some hoops, that's for sure. Um, purchased it on the website. I shipped it to a contact of mine in the UK. He then reshipped it to me for in my address in the United States. Then I went over to the United States, picked that up, brought it back into Canada, and then I have it here. So it traveled a serious distance um, through three different checkpoints to finally get to me. Um, definitely worth it. I definitely wanted to get this bottle, try it out. I've heard so many great things about it. Um, and it does live up to it, the hype for the most part. I think with my score for 88, if you take a look at how I break down my scores, um, 88 is where I start recommending that you purchase a bottle completely blind if you've never tasted it before. 88 out of 100 is where I go in and be like, okay, yes, definitely get this. Then if you took a look at my value score, 
I'm bringing it down a mark. So that's gonna bring it down from a recommended buy to a very highly recommended try, just because of the price. The price on this one, I'm not gonna suggest that you go out, if you're in Canada, go through hoops to get it to you, or if you're in the United States, you might be able to get it a little bit easier, but you're still gonna need someone to ship it to you. And there is one service that does provide shipping from the UK to the United States. I'll link to it down below, you can check it out. They only do it to a certain amount of states, I believe. So check the list, see if you're in the United States and you want to acquire this, you can kind of go through that process and uh, I'll link to it down below so you can check it out. But it is hard to get. Um, it's not easy, it takes a while and there's some risk involved. But if you want to go through with it, it is possible. It's possible to get done. So with water, definitely brings down a little bit of the sharpness Definitely that clove note comes right to the forefront. So you get some more spiciness and that clove does come out. As far as the youthful sharpness on the, on the finish, it's still there. Water didn't really uh, didn't mute that. It does seem like it calmed the nose down, but not the finish in my opinion. But really nice stuff. Good whiskey. Um, I really like it. Uh, let me know what you think. Have you ever tried the Glen Glen uh, teapot drain before? Really want to compare it to the cast strength um, regular version of Glen Goyne. Um, see what the differences are. But um, yeah, Glen Goyne, great distillery. They make a lot of good whiskey. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what's your favorite Glen Goyne expression that you've had so far. Really interested to see what you come up with. Um, as always, comment, like, subscribe. Lots of good stuff coming up on the channel. Stay tuned. Have a good one as always. Cheers.